Guess what I found? Fernando! <laughs> uh, that's not Fernando. Well, what do you mean that's not Fernando? How could you tell? All you have to do is look in his eyes. <laughs> or at the price tag stuck to his back. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Thanks for trying, Blanche. It's nice to know I have a friend like you who cares. <laughs> Sophia, did you come to bail us out? No, Rose. She's dropping off a manicotti with a file in it. Oh, girls, we're going to get to see Mr. Burt Reynolds after all. I thought these beautiful tickets were all going to go to waste. <laughs> so, uh, which one of you isn't going? Oh, that does it. Rose, I would never lie about the U.S. space program. <laughs> Awkward when it comes to my body, huh? No coordination? You want to see your body defy the laws of nature, physics, and Dade County? <laughs> Just hit that music girl and follow my lead. <laughs> Look into my eyes. You lay a finger on me, your teeth will be back in Sicily before you are. <laughs> You've got lots of spirit, just like your beautiful mom. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> this has gone far enough. What's, What's gone, gone far enough? I was talking to her. Look, from now on, she'll be ma number one, and you're ma number two. I think I'm slowly going out of my mind. All right. Legs wider. Ooh. Ooh, that hurts. I'm not having any trouble. Why is it that doesn't surprise me? <laughs> Okay, everybody on their feet. Whirly birds! Whirly birds! <laughs> Jackhammer! Jackhammer! This is it, Sophia? Well, this doesn't seem so bad. Believe me, you have to get into it more before you realize how bad it really is. Just like War and Remembrance. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies, but uh, visiting hours are over. Oh, well, then I guess we'll uh, just come No, back. we don't. We're not here to visit. We're not? Uh, no, we're here to see about checking in Mom. Honey, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you looking for? Nothing. <laughs> now, Sophia, tell me the truth. All right, Dreyfus is gone. He ran away? No, we had a falling out and agreed to a trial separation. It was time to plant the crops, but after 17 years of pulling the plow, poor old Bessie was worn out. <laughs> well, why didn't you just get another mule? Well, Bessie wasn't a mule. She was a big fat lady who pulled farm hogs. <laughs> If she was too old to pull a plow, how could she ever pull a plow? I know, and you, you look exactly the way you did at our high school graduation. Of course, rumors were that you were three months pregnant. I want you to meet my husband, Jack. You didn't tell me you had such a handsome husband. Didn't tell you he was rich, either. Oh, that's my Trudy. Oh, you haven't lost your sense of humor. Or those pesky ten pounds. A week from tonight. Pepe, tell them. Okay. Pepe, boom boom, kill Gonzalez. <laughs> Atta boy, Tiger. Hey, Pepe, why don't you do some road work while we talk? Okay. Immigration, Pepe, immigration. <laughs> We've hardly sold any tickets. We can't find an MC, and every act that we have auditioned is awful. Dorothy, I've got some good news. I've had a change of heart. I'll let the trippers be in your show for free. Why, Sophia, that's... Oh, honey, you don't know how much good this does us. Wait just a minute. What's the catch? That is so typical of you. <laughs> well, Dorothy, I live by one simple rule. Share your love with people today, because they may be gone tomorrow. It's a beautiful sentiment, Blanche. Comes from dating a lot of traveling salesmen. <laughs> I heard a fable when I was a little girl in St. Olaf that might help. Can I tell you? That's right, Rose. Wait till my defenses are down and take advantage of me. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> my Sal and I were driving my father cross country to a wedding when we had some car trouble. Of course, Sal and Papa never got along anyway, so there was trouble even before we left Brooklyn. 
But once we hit Chicago, the car started making a strange noise. Savannah, what are you looking at? You don't have to pretend you know about cars. You want to impress me, learn to take with a fork instead of a bread crust. Ma, I cannot believe you sent my picture in to a total stranger. I didn't send in your picture. I sent the picture that came with my wallet. <laughs> with you. Think of how mad your date's gonna be when he finds out he's not going out with Janet Gaynor. Does this look okay? Oh, fine. A little overdressed for a quiet evening at home. Oh, Blanche, didn't you hear Rose has a date? A date? Yes. I met him briefly at the counseling center and he asked me out to dinner. Well, Rose has a date and I don't. <laughs> what are the odds of something like this happening? <laughs> It's probably a better chance of getting struck by lightning in a house you run from Ed McMahon. Hi, Ma. Boy, am I steamed. They took Pat Sajak off Wheel of Fortune. Well, that's because he has his own late-night talk show now. Oh, yeah, right. The man spins a big wooden wheel for eight years. Suddenly, he's discussing detente with Henry Kissinger. <laughs> what else happened lately? Mike Tyson hosting Masterpiece Theater? <laughs> Ma, why are you so cranky today? I'm not cranky. I'm gassy. Oh, morning, Ma. You sleep okay? Nah. I got up in the middle of the night and there was a puddle in my bed. <laughs> you know how relieved I was to find out the roof was leaking. Oh, hi, Rose. Hey, the ceiling in your room leaking too? No, Dorothy. I just finished milking the cow I keep in my closet. <laughs> Gee, with only three hours sleep, I can be as bitchy as you. Well, Stanley, you know how she gets at weddings, all emotional. Her nose starts running, then her mascara starts running. Pretty soon everything's running all together. Nobody can enjoy their cake. <laughs> Stan, I have to tell you something. Dorothy, somebody's at the door. I'll get it. No, you won't. <laughs> but I'm closer. I oh, 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 it must be that old plow injury. Dorothy, did you get the door? Oh. oh, I'm having a little trouble putting this all together, Clayton. I, I just feel like I don't know you anymore. I'm the same person. I always was. No, you're not. You used to be just like me. What? Great looking? Yes. Charming? Yes. Irresistible to men? <laughs> the bid's 900, 900 once, 900 twice, sold for $900. Congratulations. And now, moving along to item number 17. A leather jacket recently worn in concert by one of the world's leading musical talents. Oh, get ready, this is it. I have a really dumb question. And I have a box of chiclets. What's your point? You'd think you'd miss that feeling you get with that first puff. That feeling of relaxation when you hold it in and then the sheer exhilaration as you exhale slowly. No, not really. I've I found other ways to ease my tensions. Uh, honey, would you hand me that large saucepan over there? Oh, sure. No, the one behind it, the really big one. Oh. <laughs> nice going. I can come more ground than you in my wheelchair. <laughs> How you feeling, Ma? No improvement. Uh, I'm sorry. By the way, you're wearing your knee brace on your neck. <laughs> At least I think it's the airport. <laughs> wow, in 20 minutes we'll be in St. Gustav, and then we'll hop on a train for Zumbro Falls, and we'll grab the shuttle. <laughs> By my estimation, we should be in St. Olaf in a couple of days. Days? <laughs> Did it leave a faint trail of yellow exhaust? Yes, it did. <laughs> Very good. Ms. Bornack, there's a perfectly simple explanation for what you saw. Oh, well, I always knew there would be. <laughs> what you and Rose Nyland saw was a UFO. Yeah. <laughs> Take five. Even the seagulls stopped listening. The rain kept our fans away. Baloney. Every week we've been collecting, what, $20, $30 for the clinic? The last couple of weeks, we're lucky if we break 10. And you know why? We're losing our edge. The excitement is gone. We're not driven like we used to be. 
Haven't we learned anything from the tragic examples of Mike Douglas and Ferdinand Marcos? <laughs> Girls, I'm just beside myself. Fidel's seen another woman. Are you sure? Yes. We used to see each other constantly. Now I'm lucky to see him twice a week. If he's not seeing another woman, what else could he be doing? Maybe he paints like Red Skelton. <laughs> Rose, would you please hand me my grade book? Sure. Thank you. Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, I know exactly what you're going through. I can read it in your face. You can. Oh, sure. Your husband or your boyfriend dumped you. Oh, honey, don't let it get you down. It's just the nature of the beast. They'd do it in the mud if they had to. <laughs> you just go sleep with his best friend. That'll even up the score. What flash? Don't even speak to me, Rose. What you did was terrible. I've never been so humiliated in my entire life. That's not true. What about the time you got caught with the organ man? <laughs> Don't comfort me, Rose. <laughs> Gee, Ma, I don't know if this was such a good idea. I think you're right, Dorothy. Maybe I should have done my own hair. I've been doing it for years. That's why it looks like something you buy on a stick at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, we're just a little bit nervous. This is a very important event. We want to look perfect. Please, the man works with scissors, not a sandblaster. <laughs> We had pancakes yesterday. Lillian, you weren't here yesterday. Here you are, honey, a nice cup of tea. Lillian, Sophia tells me that you were in the Ziegfeld Phallus. Oh, yes, mm. those were the days. <laughs> you must have been something. I was quite a looker. Oh. <laughs> Almost as pretty as you. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> of course, I had bigger breasts. <laughs> Well, okay. Good. I'll keep the staff busy. You get Lillian. <laughs> She's down the hall. Last door on the right. Go. Hello. I'm John Porter. I'm in charge of admissions. Oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about my mother. About checking her in? No, about a collection of commemorative plates. <laughs> of course, about checking her in. Uh, she's 125. Another slice of cheesecake, Lance. Oh, I really shouldn't. Honey, what am I going to do? Lately, you've been eating like a bird. Yeah, Rodan. <laughs> oh, girls, I'm so glad you're still up. I need to talk to you. I have a problem. Oh, honey, we know you do. you got to stop buying your hair color now to that 99 cent or less bin at the pick and save. <laughs> He ran away. Oh, when? I'm not sure. I have it pinpointed sometime between 10.15 today and late last Thursday. <laughs> you have no recollection of Dreyfus since last Thursday? I have no recollection, period, since last Thursday. <laughs> Anything could have happened in three days. I just hope I'm not carrying Steve Garvey's baby. <laughs> Who's? what the hell are you doing? Oh, I couldn't sleep, so I decided to rearrange the kitchen cabinets. <laughs> I'm sorry I woke you. Go on back to bed. Rose, what do you do with these? Nothing. You were looking for those pills, weren't you? Blanche, get rid of them. You can't do that. They're mine. Get rid of them, Blanche. No. I thought you said you could take these or leave them. Well, that's true. And right now I want to take them. <laughs> Well, finally, I get to meet the infamous Dorothy. <laughs> Boy, has Trudy told me stories about you, too. I bet she has. We had such a great time yeah. back in high school. Like the time you and Trudy ran against each other for class oh, treasurer? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in St. Olaf, I ran for president of the Bull Castration Club. <laughs> Peppy gets the stand at 20%, and we're left with a tidy sum for only one week's work. So 20% is standard for a boxer? It is if he doesn't speak English. <laughs> Ma, that's it. Forget it. Take him back. To where? Customer service? <laughs> Besides, I believe there's no return clause on fighters. Unless you're Robin Givens. <laughs> Seymour! Hello, I'm the great... I, I, I am the great... Alfonso. What? 
<laughs> Pull this damn rabbit out of your hat. Oh, my, my abracadabra, hocus pocus, hocus. My God, where's the damn rabbit? <laughs> Give me other hat. Sophia, he's terrible. No, he's not. He's terrific. Oh, you mean the act? We'll work on it. <laughs> He was called mediocre because there was nothing special about him. He wasn't talented, he wasn't smart, he wasn't rich, he wasn't handsome, he wasn't good at anything. If he also wore a bad toupee, she could be describing my Stanley. <laughs> anyway, it made Tunder's wife miserable that her husband was best known for being mediocre. I understand Marilyn Quayle feels the same way. <laughs> was I talking to you? I'm talking to my daughter. To me, you don't exist. <laughs> and who's driving you to your niece's wedding in California? Salvador, you're upsetting Papa. Would you please find a mechanic? It's freezing in here. Uh, of course it's a freezing in here. Mr. Ziti for brains decides to take a shortcut through Chicago in the dead of wind. Hello. Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> What's wrong with your hip? <laughs> I was hoping you'd be my date, Rose. Oh, gee, I'm busy tonight, but maybe you could join me again next week. What's in the box, Rose? Oh, brochures for the Be A Pal program. I'm mailing them out. Oh, how does that work? Well, you just put them in an envelope and stamp on them. Blanche, I'm sure it's a fluke that nobody called you for a date. They must have painted the men's room walls at the Pizza Hut. <laughs> well, there must be something wrong with Rose's date. There has to be. I bet he's an airhead, or a mutant, or an insurance salesman. How about this? Well, Rose, you and your geek have fun. Oh, you said she wouldn't take it well, Dorothy. Hi, Rose. Hey, how was football practice? Terrible. It's the laziest team I've ever seen in my life. They didn't bust their tackles, they didn't crack their blocks, they played like a bunch of babies. Coach, you dropped the whistle. Oh, thanks, Billy. That was very nice of you. Now, you two boys run along home. Okay, bye. Billy? Yes? I said run. Move it, you little patty waist on the double! <laughs> hey, why are you wearing makeup? So your mother won't be embarrassed? <laughs> Honey, he won't pay any attention to you no matter what you do. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey, fella, your fly is open. <laughs> Come on, lady, you don't need another. Why not? You've had three already. I said, give me another. Fine. It's your life. Just don't blame me if you get sick. You're not even going to ask what's wrong? What's wrong, Ma? I got three days to live. Fine, Ma. I'll scratch the Bengay off the grocery list. <laughs> believe you're so insensitive. Ma, you are not dying. I am, Dorothy. I had a dream last night, a death dream. Your father spoke to me. Spoke to you? How? Do I look like Rich Little? <laughs> the bid's 900, 900 once, 900 twice, sold for $900. Congratulations. And now, moving along to item number 17. A leather jacket recently worn in concert by one of the world's leading musical talents. Get ready, this is it. I have a really dumb question. And I have a box of chiclets. What's your point? You know, you really have to give Max and Sophia credit. This business was their dream, and they're going after it. I just wish I'd done that with my dream. Fine. Honey, would you check on the pizzas? One may be ready. Well, why don't you want to hear about my dream? Because it is always the same thing with you, Blanche. <laughs> sex, sex, sex. I am tired of hearing it. Maybe that's because you're not getting any, Dorothy. <laughs> I know Ma is faking. She is not really paralyzed. It's only natural for you to feel that way. At the counseling center, we learned that the first reaction to catastrophe is denial. Rose, I am not in denial. Oh, yes, you are. You're just denying you're in denial. <laughs> Rose, I am not denying that I am in denial. If you're not denying you're in denial, then you're in denial. It's kind of like Mount Rushmore, except they sculpted four losers of presidential elections in the mountainside. Let's see, there was Alf Landon, Wendell Wilkie, and Adlai Stevenson, and Adlai Stevenson. 
Why are there two Adlai Stevensons? Oh, Blanche, isn't it obvious? He lost twice. <laughs> oh, God, it's making sense. <laughs> that boy. <laughs> I had a nice time tonight, Blanche. You know, I did too. And I wasn't sure I would, if you want the truth. What? Well, this may sound funny, but uh, I kept thinking, here I am, you know, so bald and so heavy, and what if I show up and Blanche looks just as pretty as she did 30 years ago? <laughs> but I don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I'd stay away from the sausage if I were you. <laughs> Sophia, would you like to come to my art class today? Did you talk Murray Shimowitz into posing naked yet? We got him down to his trust. I've seen his trust. It's impressive. The first time he showed it off, I thought he had a turkey platter in his pants. <laughs> Besides, today's my day at the hospital. You're not feeling good? Please, I haven't felt good since Hugh Downs left the Today Show. I've never cared for a man as much as Fidel Santa Domingo. Santiago. Oh, whatever. <laughs> The point is, he's rich, he's handsome, and we were made for each other. Even if I don't speak Mexican. Spanish. Whatever. <laughs> Dom DeLuise takes me by the arm and insists I tell Bert the story. Sophia, I don't want to hear any more about it. Not even the part when Bert and Dom insisted I repeat the story to Lonnie Anderson? <laughs> That's it? I don't want to hear another word. Oh, Cinderella's back from the ball and her three wicked roommates are jealous. <laughs> It was a lovely afternoon. Oh, I'll say. I just love the legitimate theater. You know, I missed Mr. Lee J. Cobb in Death of a Salesman. I missed Mr. Marlon Brando in Streetcar Named Desire. Well, I was damned if I was going to miss Mr. Dick Butkus in Pal Joey. <laughs> and there's a brand new water heater in the garage and wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in all the bedrooms. Ma, what the hell are you doing? Selling the house. <laughs> but I think the laughter spoke for itself. That's enough, Rose. Dorothy, what are you doing up? Uh, I couldn't sleep. I just keep thinking about Ma and whose mother she really is. You're worried she might be Genus? No, I'm worried she might be Phil Rizzuto. <laughs> Notice the phrase, holy cow, creeping into her conversation. <laughs> Ma, this is all a mistake. We don't belong here. This is one of those Miami Beach shops for little old ladies. Come on, let's get out of here. All right, ladies, whose hair do I wash next? Mine. <laughs> I'm first. I'm the dirtiest. <laughs> no, I'm eating a bowl of Nabisco Zidios. <laughs> of course I'm eating pasta. I need to gain weight. I'm wasting away, Dorothy. What do you mean? I got weighed this morning. I couldn't believe what I saw. 98 pounds. What do you usually weigh? 99. Ma, you lost one pound. Thank you, Rene Descartes. I'm looking for advice, not arithmetic. Okay, Sophia, let's go. Go where? That's not Lillian. <laughs> you said you were Lillian. You think I'm in here because I'm good with names? <laughs> Honey, listen, don't panic. As soon as the girls get home from work, we'll fan out through the neighborhood and we'll find Dreyfus. No, go, Blanche. I need to handle this myself. Why? Because if Dorothy finds out I lost Dreyfus, she'll never trust me with anything again. That's why I'm begging you. Please, promise me on your mother's grave. You won't breathe a word of this to Dorothy. You promise? Yes, sure, Sophia. Good. Now I can save what I know about you and the twin rabbinical students for another time. <laughs> Well, you and Gary certainly seem to have hit it off. Well, why should we? The man's perfect. He only owns the most successful chain of funeral homes in Greater Miami. <laughs> With this heat wave we're having, he's got them stacked up like firewood in all four locations. <laughs> Rose, you can't stop taking these pills. You have a problem. I can stop. And I'll start stopping tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy, will you be proud of me. You just wait. <laughs> Only I can't stop tonight. Why not? Because, because, because tonight is the anniversary of the death of my beloved cat, Fluffy. <laughs> Just like you did after Stanley ran off with that stewardess. <laughs> Boy, I envy you your gumption. Yes, and I your breast implants. <laughs> may not be my place, but 
you two hardly sound like old friends. <laughs> Blanche is right. We should be more positive. Dorothy, you look wonderful. Uh, the left one turned out nice. <laughs> yeah, his name is uh, Kid Pepe. That's right. Yeah, he's supposed to have a fight next week. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'll... <laughs> okay, kid. There are three things you have to remember in the ring. One, keep your face covered. Two, keep your head down. And three, keep moving at all times. Incidentally, the same rules apply if you're ever dining at a clam bar in Little Italy. <laughs> Kent Ferguson canceled. We don't have an MC for the talent show. We don't even have any talent for the talent show. The whole thing's going to be a disaster. I'll be the laughing stock of the ladies' auxiliary. <laughs> Would it help if I got Bob Hope to be our MC? How are you going to get Bob Hope? Easy. He's my father. <laughs> well, she told him that she missed the time they had together when he was just mediocre. So Toonder used his magic only once more, and that was to make his powers disappear. And they lived happily ever after? No, actually, she got bored and ran off with Weisblatt the Weasel. That was <laughs> Toonder's old business manager. But they lived happily ever after. What happened to two? Oh, who cares, Blanche? <laughs> Nowhere. That's where he was going. You married a bum. Oh, excuse me. We're having a problem with the car. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm starting my lunch break. And when I get back, I got three jobs ahead of you. Oh, my beautiful. Just what I always dream about, spending the winter in Chicago. And, of course, the volcano season in Pompeii. <laughs> You know, help her with her homework and take her to movies and have dinner together. Now, that's very interesting. Maybe I could get involved with that. With you, Blanche. Sure. Why, nothing would be more satisfying than to be of loving service to a lonely, motherless child. Of course, I'll have to see pictures of the father before I commit. A feather. That's a message of some kind, isn't it? What are you babbling about? Look, don't play dumb with me, Ma. Everything from Sicily means something. A black rose means a family member is dying. A white carnation means a newborn is on the way. A dead rabbit means my husband knows. Get out of town. <laughs> knows what? Suppose take it easy. You're pushing them too hard, honey. They're only kids. Oh, you're right, Dorothy. I've just been under so much pressure. I never would have volunteered if I had known all the work that was involved. I need help. Mostly with your lipstick. And with Kelly applied makeup with more finesse. <laughs> Boy, she's really cranky. Yeah, and you don't want to know why. <laughs> Blanche, listen, we really have to talk about the roof. Dorothy, I already called the repair man. Last night, the damn ceiling caved in on my bedroom. Knocked the Zorro mask right out of poor Ed Rosen's hand. Oh, that must be the roof. I'm oh, Sid LaBasse. You called about your roof? Yes, won't you come in? Yeah, wait a sec. I think I stepped in something. That's good enough. He let me out at the movie theater, said he was going to go park the car. That's the last I saw of him. I think you've been ditched. Now, did I ask you? If I want advice on getting ditched, I'll ask an expert. Dorothy, did I get ditched? <laughs> yes, Blanche, but don't feel bad. Look what it's done for Sonny Bono. <laughs> and it's finally happened. I cannot believe it. I have lost it, haven't I? In more back seats than any woman I know. <laughs> I'm sitting in the living room, and the clock strikes nine. Then the bell rings. It's your father and his fedora. He always wore a fedora on Saturday. He walks towards me, reaches out his hand and says, Sophia, you can come now. There's room for you now. That's it? You want them to show up with Barbara Eden and the College All-American football team? In addition to my sizable donation, I've just dispatched my top aide to one of the many shelters in our community with the jacket I've just purchased. May it provide warmth and comfort to one of our city's homeless. We're screwed. There's a lot more than that to Blanche Devereaux. My dream was to be a great scientist, work in a laboratory, do research, find a cure for the common cold. You know, Blanche, I owe you an apology. I really thought... Then I'd knock know. all those test tubes off the table, grab a PhD, and show those lab rabbits how it's really done. <laughs> I sure do. Rose, I was about to tell a story. I, I want to tell one. Dorothy, 
Boy, this is a no-win situation. <laughs> but go ahead, Blanche. Well, fine. You may never get to hear my story. <laughs> then I'm wrong. It isn't a no-win situation. <laughs> a lake. I think we'll just sit here. I'll go with you, Rose. I'm a sucker for natural beauty. And a gin and tonic. Let's find the bar car. <laughs> Blanche, I'm glad we're alone. There's something I think we should do. Dorothy, I like you as a friend, but I think I'll pass. Well, I guess I better be getting back to the hotel. Oh, honey, are you sure you have to? Blanche, are you asking me what I think you're asking me? Think you might like some company tonight? Maybe some other time, Blanche. I guess we should get back to work. Oh, I suppose so, but you know, a big meal always makes me so sleepy. <laughs> Is that why you usually go right to bed after a date buys you dinner? <laughs> you know, you're probably right. Oh, why would Fidel want another woman? After all, he's dipped his toes in the lake known as Blanche. <laughs> That wasn't stupid enough to deserve a hit? We are not jealous, Ma. We are angry. You left us sitting in jail. Hey, I sent over the bail money. You were out an hour later. I think that was just about the time I was nibbling a giant shrimp out of Jerry Reed's hand. You're making this whole thing up just to rub it in. You have never met these people. Jealousy is a very ugly thing, Dorothy. And so are you in anything backless. <laughs> are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, I know exactly what you're going through. I can read it in your face. You can. Oh, sure. Your husband or your boyfriend dumped you. Oh, honey, don't let it get you down. It's just the nature of the beast. They'd do it in the mud if they had to. <laughs> You just go sleep with his best friend. That'll even up the score. Just because a hospital vending machine screws up a lousy cup of coffee doesn't mean that the hospital did anything wrong. Oh, sure. A mistake like getting two babies mixed up makes the headlines. But the point is, statistics back me up. Hospitals are remarkably efficient institutions. I mean, seriously. How often does a hospital mix up two babies? Have you ever heard of such a thing? Well, I have you. Are you here for the methadone program? <laughs> Dorothy, now do you see why I'm so embarrassed? Can you imagine a dance with movements just like making love and I can't do it? <laughs> Relax, Blanche. Maybe standing up is what's throwing you. <laughs> oh, God, you are gorgeous. Yes, I know. <laughs> I am Eduardo. Oh, Eduardo, tonight is very important to us. We want to look our best. Don't worry, ladies. After Eduardo does a woman's hair, the years melt away. She is transformed into a breathtaking, sensuous, vivacious goddess of beauty. I tried to get all that on a sign, but they charge by the letter. Now hurry. Come on. Okay, let's fill this out. Uh, please. Um, and you are? Sophia, Sophia P Hawkins. Okay, Mrs. P Hawkins. Um... Oh, hi, girls. Did you all find Lillian? You bet we did. And that sunny pastures was everything that Ma said it would be. And how there was crud on the floor, rats in the hallway, and 60 people to every blanket. It wasn't fit for human life. Although in my village in Sicily, it would have been a two-star motel. <laughs> Hi, Rose. Hi, Gary. Come on in. <laughs> I just wanted to drop off Blanche's earrings. They must have fallen off in my car the oh, other night. I'll get Blanche for you. She's in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, no, uh, don't do that. Uh, actually, there's something I want to talk to you about. What is it, Gary? Rose, I find you very attractive. <laughs> Much more attractive than most of the women I come in contact with. <laughs> the truth is... I can't stop tonight because I'm afraid. 
I don't know if I can. That's because you're hooked on these, Rose. But honey, there's a place for people with this kind of problem. Please, what is she gonna do in the NBA? <laughs> Oh, come on, Rose, I'm just kidding. They're both practically the same size. How about giving me a hand in the kitchen? Were they like that in high school, Mrs. Petrillo? Oh, no, her breasts were actually a lot smaller than that. I meant, were they rivals? What is this, Nova? I don't have all the answers. Ma, we, we could turn that down. I can't hear. Uh, yes, 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 I'm still here. Yes. So the contract is valid? Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Everything is on the up and up. He does have a fight scheduled. All we have to do is hire a cut man, but I can probably do that on my way back from the dry cleaners. <laughs> so like most of the kids there, I started fantasizing about who they might be. I had a particularly clear picture in my head of my father. Anyway, one day, they took us all to the movies. And when Bob Hope came on the screen, I stood up and yelled, my God, that's my father, that's him! <laughs> hey, once you hear happily ever after, it's over. <laughs> well, Dorothy, did you get anything out of this? Actually, I did get an idea. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take Ma away for the weekend to a cabin in the Florida Keys where we can spend some quality time together. You got that idea from her fable? No, I got it from this brochure somebody left on the table. But I'll tell you, I never would have read it if her fable hadn't bored me to tears. Well, I see, he is holding a machine gun. So I decide to take his advice. I move, run at that that everybody's falling like a flies on your Aunt Regine. You're letting your imagination run wild, Papa. This is Chicago, not Sicily. You're just a little homesick, that's all. Uh, I saw another garage a couple of blocks away. Where the cars are not running. Uh, who cares? I am. Eddie, what wonderful things have you got planned for tonight? Uh, nothing. I was going to cancel, but my therapist wouldn't let me. Perhaps if we spoke to him together. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still not really recovered. You see, after 25 years of marriage, my wife Roberta sent me a Dear John letter. That's terrible, married 25 years, and she doesn't know your name is Eddie. <laughs> Hi, Ernie. Hi, Rose. <laughs> Ernie, I want you to meet my friends. This is Dorothy and do Blanche and Miss Sophia. Pleasure. Everyone, this is Ernie Faber. I'm sorry I'm late, Rose. I got tied up in court. What are you charged with? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I'm a corporate attorney. Damn. You just take all the fun out of it. Oh, not anymore, Dorothy, really. Believe me, all I care about is that these kids have a really good time. Well, all right. I mean, if you really mean it, you can count me in. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, with your help, Dorothy, we'll kick their butts. We'll chew them up and spit them out. We'll make them eat dirt for breakfast. <laughs> because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> Mr. Labas, I want to thank you for coming on such short notice. Uh, you're lucky I came at all. I got a horrible cold. I was so dizzy this morning, I lost my balance getting out of bed. I guess my equilibrium shot. Well, I'm sure you'll feel better once you're up on the roof. <laughs> Gee, I guess I won't be making it in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue this year like the rest of you. Sophia, Dorothy's just concerned about your health. We all are. Ma, you have been walking around sick for over a week. You would feel a lot better if you would just obey the doctor's orders. Now look, either you're going to follow his orders or I'm going to call him and tell on you. Ooh, what is he going to do? Come over and spank me? If he does, tell him to come by my room. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Those look lovely. So do you. Oh, Blanche, you really got all dressed up for your brother. Well, we do come from the South. We always felt it was important to look absolutely great in front of company. Hi, girls. What time does Clayton get here? Oh, any minute now. Oh, we better put out the welcome mat. <laughs> we don't have a welcome mat. What about the one Dorothy says is at the foot of your bed? <laughs> Excuse me? $10,000. 10000 once, 10000 twice, sold for $10,000. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Would you mind if I said a few words to the audience? For ten grand, they should let them shower with the audience. <laughs> I 
Agnes, now I'll never get to fly on the Concorde. And I'll never get to buy that emerald pendant to dangle between my perky bosoms. <laughs> and I'll never get to buy perky bosoms. <laughs> it doesn't matter how good your product is, you have to know how to promote it. That sure was the case with Fritz Vanderhoeven, who owned the St. Olaf Motor Coach Company. They built a car in St. Olaf? They sure did. The Vanderhoeven rocket. Oh, it was a beauty. Fritz really had vision. Actually, he had double vision, which is why it had eight tires. I was still in high school at the time, and I was having an affair with a very handsome exchange student named Jean-Pierre Fontainebleau. <laughs> I think he was French or something. <laughs> he was always sneering and he wore a beret. We were never allowed to wear berets when I was in high school. It was against the St. Olaf dress code. <laughs> they did let me wear a paper cap a lot. <laughs> it was long and pointy. Do that, Tom. Honey, that's just ridiculous. Hold on, here we go. Rose, listen, it's about your biography, honey. Um, there's something in there that, uh, well... What is the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know exactly how to say this. Wait a minute. Where's Ma? <laughs> Maybe it'd be just like Cocoon, and they'd take us away, and we'd never grow old. See, I don't know. I, I like my life. I mean, I'm not president or anything. I'm just a teacher, a substitute teacher, <laughs> a divorced substitute teacher. <laughs> who can't even afford her own place to live. Beam me up! You did. At the beauty parlor, don't you remember? And Agnes said you were a lot of hot air, and you said she was just jealous because she wasn't getting any. <laughs> and I said, getting any what? And you said, rice pudding, Rose? And I said, could we just get back to moving the furniture? Oh, let's really get crazy. We'll eat Chinese and use forks. <laughs> I know, I know. We'll pretend it's one of our birthdays and screw them out of a cake. <laughs> Boy, if I wasn't going, I'd really be jealous yes. of me. But I am going, so that's all irrelevant. Yeah. Rose, did I hit you too hard before? No, not at all. I'm trying a new hairspray, and it absorbs most of the impact. <laughs> Rose, it is not here. Look again, it has to be. Rose, I have read every want ad in the paper. Mine is not here. Are you sure you dropped it off at the newspaper office? Dorothy, you told me exactly what you wanted me to do a dozen times. Any idiot could have done it. I know, honey, but you were the only one going down. <laughs> oh, I see you two are getting acquainted. Yes, I'm just going to take my stuff to my room. It's that second on the left down the hall there. Uh, Dorothy, the second on the left is mine. Blanche had promised it to me. Well, Blanche promised it to me too, didn't you, Blanche? Whoops! <laughs> oh, great! Great! What are we supposed to do now? Back in Minnesota, we'd settle this kind of a dispute with some good-natured log rolling. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Rose, my log is in the shop. At my age, that's like wildcat drilling for oil. <laughs> Ma, when are you going to get the results of the blood test? I'm a nervous wreck. Let me take a few minutes. Relax, would you? Oh, Ma, how can I relax? Any minute now, somebody can walk in here and tell me you're not really my mother. Let me remind you of something that may set your mind at ease. Are you going to tell a story? No, I'm going to sing a Negro spiritual. <laughs> I am your clay. Mold me. Not so fast, Eduardo. What are you going to do with me? You have good bones. Yes, this is a strong, noble face full of wisdom and sincerity. You could be a Greek goddess. Oh, go on, Eduardo. <laughs> I said go on, Eduardo. Yvonne, we want to join a gym. Well, what kind of exercise are you interested in? Oh, nothing radical. Just yeah. lose a few pounds. Yeah. Tone up. Yeah, slim down. Get into my summer wardrobe. Get into my winter wardrobe. Get into my bathrobe. <laughs> Yvonne, we are desperate women. You've got to help us. I know just what you need. Aerobics. It's what I do. But Yvonne, you're much younger than they are. <laughs> and that was business class. <laughs> what I need to know is, does your mother require any special medical care? She does. Uh, a, a, an old war injury. Remember the main? She didn't. 
She was a frogman and swam right into the bulkhead. They put a metal plate in her head. Now she gets HBO through her eyeballs. She's doing it again. First it was Antonio's, then it was the tickets. She's leaving me out intentionally. Uh, Rose, they were just misunderstandings. Now, you're overreacting. I guess so. Oh, these things happen between sisters all the time. I remember once my sister Virginia wouldn't talk to me for a month, all because I smiled at her boyfriend. There, listen to Blanche. Of course, I was skinny dipping on his property at the time. <laughs> Now, would you mind taking Ma for a walk tonight? <laughs> Ma, forget it, forget it. The dog is all yours. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why is there a big hairy beast in my house? My guess is because he bought you dinner. <laughs> you no. bet we are, honey. Oh. This is what friendship is all about. Banding together when the going gets tough. Sacrificing sleep and personal comfort. Putting someone else's need ahead of your own. It's beautiful. Let me know how it turns out in the morning. <laughs> women competing like that and there's not even a man at stake. <laughs> In Sicily, women compete for everything. The most famous example is the Great String Cheese War of 47. <laughs> Why should I bore you with that? You all have college credits. You took history. Sophia, have you been out in the hot sun too long? <laughs> it's a possibility. Is there wax running out of my ears? <laughs> Wouldn't it be something, though, to make $7,000 in seven days? It sure would. Oh, girls, girls, remember what we're dealing with here. My mother bought this man at a bus stop. <laughs> jab, left, jab, jab, left. Well, what are you doing? You don't know the first thing about boxing. Please. I used to be known as the Don King of Sicily. <laughs> I used to wear my hair differently then. You just leave it to me. I know in my heart he'll be here. Rose, just so I get this straight, you never actually met Bob Hope. No, but I'm sure looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not how it was. You're right. Sometimes they force me to make moccasins. <laughs> No thanks, not again. Look, Ma, all I want us to do is go away together, just the two of us. Ma, we'll go anywhere you want to go. Great, I want to go to Disney World. Then that's where we're going. Oh? All of a sudden you're going to take me after I've been asking for years? That's right. Leave your shoe sizes. Let me know whether you want your moccasins in brown or black. <laughs> Dorothy, did you ever make love on top of a mountain? No. The closest I ever came was making love on top of a fat guy called Old Smokey. <laughs> Let's check in. Hello, ladies. Welcome to Sunny Meadows. Oh, thank you. We don't... Whoa! <laughs> this Klingon Spritzer show me. Good morning, Blanche. You're up early. Well, I'm making a list of things to do with our little pals. I just hope I'm good at it. Well, with all that enthusiasm, I'm sure you will be. Well, I just want to make a difference in the lives of these youngsters. I want to, I want to teach them. I want to mold them. I want to become a positive influence on every aspect of their young lives. It is only one afternoon a week, isn't it? <laughs> morning, Ma. Good morning. Bob, what is going on? Ever since you got that feather in the mail, you've been acting like a spy. I'm surprised you didn't check to see if someone was hiding out in the broom closet. Broom closet, right. Hey, Blanche, I didn't see you. Uh, listen. Ernie, could you freshen my drink, please? Oh, sure, Blanche. Look. And put uh, some extra ice cubes in it this time. Okay, Blanche. I don't I know won't... why you all are so stingy with your ice cubes. They are free, aren't they? Blanche. Ernie. <laughs> You notice how I keep interrupting you? It's because I don't want to hear what you're going to tell me. He called and canceled again, didn't he? Sorry, Blanche. Oh. He told me to buy you anything you'd like. Really? Well, then get out your phone book and open it to the jewelry section. <laughs> Maybe we can talk Sid into letting us pay in installments. Oh, that's a great idea. Now, he's a reasonable man. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't go for it. Okay, a new roof it is. Look, I, I said that payment was due today, not next Thursday. Now, that check better be on my desk tomorrow or you will regret it, believe me. Understand? 
All right. We'll talk to you later, Dad. <laughs> Congratulate me, everyone. I'm getting hitched. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, congratulations, oh, Dan. Dan. Tell us all about it. <laughs> Her name is Catherine. We met at the post office. We discovered we had a lot in common. Oh, is she bald too? <laughs> Clayton! Baby brother! Sister! Oh my, look at you all gussied up. Prettier than a spring blooming peach tree on a dewy April morning. Oh, well, you ought to talk all fresh scrubbed and rosy cheek like a country parson in a September whole day <laughs> on. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling they had a maid named Honeybee when they grew up? Now, I forget. How's this go again? Uh, to win something, you have to get three to match? Right. If you get three coconuts, you win $100. What if you get three palm trees? <laughs> you don't have three palm trees. That means you win $10,000. Ma, I know what a palm tree looks like. You also know what a handsome doctor looks like. It doesn't mean you got one. <laughs> It's here. I am so excited. It's my letter from the Elvis Presley fan club. Oh, my hands are shaking. Dorothy, you read it. Dear Rosen Island, your application to start an unauthorized chapter of the Elvis Presley hunka hunka burning love fan club. Actually, it was in the cutaway Oldsmobile that they kept in the driver's ed department at school. Oh, Lordy, the things I did in that car. <laughs> it's a good thing old St. Christopher had his back to me. <laughs> Uh, there's no doubt about it. She's faking. Uh, uh, Dorothy, I didn't learn to do that till I was married. <laughs> Rose, are we anywhere near St. Olaf? We're getting close. Look, there's the old tree house. Oh, gee, when I was a kid, my best friend Ingrid and I used to go up there all the time. Oh, gosh, it's her. I haven't talked to her in ages. Well, why don't you give her a call? Well, maybe I will. Sure. Hey! Is that you, Rose? Dorothy, where are you going? We might miss the aliens. That would be fine with me. Dorothy, why are you talking that way? I think it's wonderful that there are other beings out there trying to meet us. They might have solutions to all our problems. Cures for our diseases. New storylines for Elf. <laughs> well, the weather's cleared up. I, I really think we should save a big project like this for a rainy day. Now, we agreed we weren't going to waste time. That'd be a big mistake, something we'd regret for the rest of our lives. Rose, we're eating pizza, not getting tattoos. <laughs> the idea of wasting time. I always have, ever since what happened to my neighbor in St. Olaf. Rose. In fact, I had such a good time, I forgot all about old what's-his-name. Fidel. Oh, honey, I know what his name is. No, I mean, there he is. <laughs> and he has his arms around another woman. Fidel Santiago. My papers are in order. Oh, hello, Blanche. What in hell is going on here? Blanche, How can I... you be so deceitful? What is it? Is she younger, more attractive, more desirable? You got two out of three, Blanche. Hello, xin chào các bạn. Đây là cây hoa hồng. Ra rất là nhiều hoa nhưng mà nó lụi vợi rồi. Cây hồng rất là cao Nhà cháu sắp xong rồi bạn Vâng Còn một ít nữa thôi Họ đang làm lốt Đây là cái lụ hoa